Okay, Good. you said something about grumpy old man. I can always play the role of grumpy old man. He Everybody knows that. One. Grumpy. Well, because grumpy. Should we, should we do like a spoof movie. intro? It's like, you know what really grinds my gears? Yeah, do it, do it, do it. Okay. I can do it. <laughs> I'll tell you, both. you know what really grinds my gears right now? Is this 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 shit on the media that I can't I can't have a narrative for because you don't want to chime in on a lot of the socials like the shrinkflation, right? Which right. is a legit thing, and for legit reasons. Yeah. But the media spins it into this thing now because it gets great airwaves and everybody's oh my chocolate bar shrunk. Yeah, right? yeah. I no, it's it. it's really interesting. Like that space, I've been interviewed four or five times lately, especially around skimpflation. Seems to That's be the other one. The flation yeah. that people are all in on. Right. And, you know, I just I, I think. I've tried to be the voice of reason with the journalists because they're like, you know, my chocolate bar shrunk or, or you know, X, Y, Z ingredients change. I was like, look, this is a dynamic. If you're managing a brand, you never want your product to be crappier than it is today. You never want your product to be more right. expensive or less affordable than it is today. So you're playing with the levers a little bit um, in order to make sure that you can cut your costs so that your product is still affordable, but you don't want there to be a noticeable difference in your product when someone eats it or uses it. Whichever and, it is. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, the last thing you want is, you know, for Betty to be making her recipe that she's made for the last 25 years. And then it doesn't come out correctly because there's some sort of new ingredient or filler in your ingredient of her recipe. So, you know, I really tried to talk the journalist down from the ledge on that one because, you know, the, there is a bit of a hysteria around it. But as you know, if you're managing a brand, the reality is you can say oh, whatever you want about other examples of this, but these brands are not there for charity. They're there to make money. They're under cost pressures. They don't want to make changes because they incur listing fees if they shrink the bar. They incur, you know, packaging changes if they change the ingredients. It's expensive for them to do. It's a last mm. resort. It's not something they just wake up and say, hey, you know what? Let's shave 20 grams out of the box of KD. That's not what they want to do. And so, um, you know, I, I think the current media frenzy around all of the flations has been a little bit overdone. Um, and and this will be super popular, but you know, the retailers and that dragging them to parliament and kind of grilling them about what food prices are. I was like, okay, what's the alternative? We live in a, in a massive country with 40 million people strung out across the whole thing. You know, this isn't a free enterprise where you can, you know, you know, there's trucks. We're not Luxembourg, right. Where anybody yeah. could set up a retail ne distribution network, like there's fixed costs of doing this. And at the end of the day, the number is big because we have a few players of what the profit is, but the percentage isn't really the percentage is a three percent is a three yeah. percent sort of return. And I yeah. always tell people, so if you put money in the bank at three percent today, when you can get five, you're happy. That's what you're telling me. Yeah, I said, you guys got to understand the the, the 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 what you're talking about. Go back to uh, let me just do shrinkflation just very quickly because I'll give you the example that I gave someone yesterday because they went off on this capitalist rant and I said that's that's bullshit. I said when I started London Drugs in 1990, a a, a Purex 24 count toilet paper with 500 sheets was 7.99 on feature 6.99, 8.99 every day. Let's say it's the same today. The only way yeah. it stays the same today with the massive cost over the last 30 years is now it's a 250 count or 225. And you know the reason why? Just so we're all clear, you don't want to pay. Right. You don't yeah. want to pay $30 for the 500 count. You right. want to pay $7.99. What other options yeah. do you have less cutting down? You can do the Inflation. That one pisses me off. And I'll give you an example. We got, we just, uh, we had some chocolate bars come into the office yesterday because of Halloween, right? And mm -hmm. I'm going to pick on the brand and they could, they can argue if they want. I hope they come back, but they challenge it. But I, I love Reese's peanut butter cups. My favorite one. They're the best. I love it, right. The challenge I'm having on the, the latest batch, way more sweeter and less peanuty than I ever remember them. Hmm. Interesting. So 
peanuts have gone way up in price. Yep. Chocolate has gone way up in price. Sugar really hasn't. So in order to gain, to keep this at a retail that I can, that I want to pay, just be clear, I want to pay. I don't want to pay four times what I could have in the old days for the same size because that would be wrong because now they're gouging me, even though they're not. Right. And, and, and come on, when I defend Hershey, like seriously, we, we, you know, come on. Yeah, yeah. But you know I mean, so when I look at it, I thought, okay, to me, what they've probably done is tweak the recipe and now it's sugared. That bugs me. Not so much the downsizing. The downsizing is a result of us and we telling people what we want to pay for things. Right. Yeah. That is not necessarily driven by this evil corporation. It's just not. No. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, this notion of evil corporation is quite funny. Like, I, I think it's but just they do exist, easy to though, drum that up, right? Yeah. Because you know, everybody knows the name, everybody shops in their stores or has one of their products in their pantry. Yeah. Let's get our, our, let's get our pitchforks out. Um, yeah. But okay. What's the alternative you have? On the other hand, you have Kimberly Clark saying, you know what, we can't make money on Kleenex in Canada. We're pulling the brand out. Yeah. What, yeah, you, want yeah. Them to do? what yeah. you want on the other side? Like that's, but, but, that's a very similar decision. And that's like something you should be like, that's a major brand that's been here a but very cool. long time for for a, a company of that size with a brand of that kind of equity to go it's no longer worth it i got to get out that tells you like that is not you know that's that's not um you know cuz we, we we spend a lot of time talking about like little brands that we worry about that are going to go out of business this is not a little brand they don't need to worry about us they don't nor they don't need to worry about fuck all they are mm. a big ass brand that is global in size and but they're going to country can't make it can't make it work in this country so you think a company of that size with all those big brains all those pe talented people working there can't make it work in our country it tells you this is not this is not the evil corporation right there are 100% going to be guys who are doing some exploitation for sure and trying to figure yeah. out how to get some more pennies out of this but like the bigger issue is yeah. it's we're turning into an environment that it's hard to compete in. Exactly. Like to me, to me, that is, you know, the same government that went, I'm going to be grumpy old man and like, come here and explain this to me. I think the flip side is true is you guys need to explain to us, like, what are you doing? Like, how come you tell me how we got to five major retailers? I didn't I, listen. I thought there was a competition act. I thought there was all these checks and balances. You know who the government should call to the table themselves? You guys allowed all this shit to happen. You allowed all these mergers. I didn't I didn't do it. We've yeah. lost so many independents and so much thing because you've allowed these large companies. Well, the one in our province is notorious right now. They've taken over pretty much just what what independents of any size are left in the West. Right. Yeah. Who's allowing that? That's not us allowing that. And it's not that I hate that company. It's not that I hate any of them per se. I shop law of laws. Yeah. I don't like dealing. But they would benefit from the competition for sure. I just need, we would benefit from the competition, but right? we don't want 85 it. Eighty-five <laughs> percent is, is dumped into five guys. Yeah. Well, I always I always say like I mean, I think there's there's always this threat if you look at how Aldi and Lidl are doing in the U.S. and how they developed in Australia and other markets around the world. You know, I was in Hungary the the day that Lidl launched and you know they launched with a pod of 25 stores and and what Lidl does is very much they out Walmart Walmart you know Walmart. in terms of that impressive. model of like build a warehouse build a network of stores around that warehouse and then move out build another warehouse and do the same thing mm -hmm. and um you know that they could hypothetically come to Canada and I think people would you know from a competition standpoint, there would be a parade out in the street, I think, from from all sides. Probably. Um, and I think they could do pretty well in their in their space because, you know, if anything, the discount retailers in Canada are going away from like just as WestJet went away from being a discount on airline and they had to launch swoop and then re-swallow it up. And, you know, it, it, this cycle repeats itself where going back towards the middle seems more cool for a brand. Now you have no frills plus, you know, yeah. because what we do with this massive old superstore, um, you know, and so that's going to, they will open a space on the end for someone to drop into a market 
And, you know, you don't, it doesn't need to be in the GTA. It could be a market that's, you know, smaller. It could be Winnipeg or something like that, where mm-hmm. they could get in and build a network of stores or, mm-hmm. you know, a Calgary Edmonton situation where they build something in Red Deer and they build out 30 stores because they don't need a lot of space. They can move into the old, um, you know, Babies R Us store or the old uh, yeah. Bed yeah. Bath & Beyond store. They don't need a massive footprint. So, yeah. yeah. There's definitely play in it. I mean, it, it, the sad part would be in my head, like you want to go down that side is, I, it's always a shame to me that it's going to be someone international. I mean, we should be able to do this, do this on our own, but the cost of I get it to what we sort of started at the beginning, retail is not an inexpensive game and there's not a ton of return. There just really isn't at the end. These, these are corporations. They're making a large absolute dollar. I appreciate that. I'm not stupid. I can see it. Yeah. But if you look at it in proportion to sales, it's less than what you would get if you put your money in the bank. Yeah. Yeah. GICs are 5% today. It's like- so for 5%, why do I have to have all the freaking hassles of this whole structure? I can dump it in the bank and make 2% yeah. more. Doing yeah, stay home, sleep in. You, you know what I mean? So again, it's not man. to say that, you know, and this is what this, I think the narrative is what bugs me is this nefarious side. Right. If you don't know retail, yes, dealing with these large retailers is really challenging for small people. Because it's too many large and too many large vendors, and they control the whole system, and it's very difficult for small retailers and small brands to do damage. It really is. It's very difficult because it's a very expensive game. Mm-hmm. So that has been set up not, again, by the three of us. That's a government issue. That's a competition issue. They allowed all these mergers and acquisitions. We didn't, per se. Right. I guess we vote people in, so we're responsible for it. But. I just, I just drives me crazy the narrative right now because the soundbite is just this hype and bullshit, and there's nothing behind it that that's that's necessarily factual in a lot of ways. No, you're right, and I think like to think about sort of a new competitor space, whether it would be Aldi or Lidl or someone uh, like an international retailer with that format, or if it was the three of us saying, "Hey, let's put together." you know, uh, an ultra low cost retailer, you'd have to do it using the Aldi model where it would have to be all private label um, because, you know, you can't control it. Quite honestly, the vendor community is not really going to want to give the best deal possible to Kenny, Phil and Jeffco. You know, that's not because we would be too small, but Aldi would have the space to come in and say, well, we've got an international agreement. Yeah. We want to make sure we have, coca-cola two liter or come up with a 1.75 liter that we can put on our shelves and they would do it right it's it's a yeah that's that's the other barrier to the canadian you know a canadian solution is a random 25 store you know even if we could scrape together the money even if we wanted to take it out of the bank at five and make three um then you you couldn't make it somehow but we'd have to do it with private label probably just to Yeah, because our co- you wouldn't have the cost advantage to actually be a hard discounter yeah. without without it. So you know, and then the flip side to that in our country, let's say that they had to do that, we don't process a lot. We don't process as much as we think we do. So right. even at that point, like as a government, you could say, "Listen, we're going to allow you to come in. Please come in. We'll give you some incentives, but just so you know, fifty percent of your private label needs to be made in Canada." And the problem right. with that is, I don't think we can do it for. Them. Right. Yeah. You couldn't put that in place because it'd be impractical. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, on the flip side is, again, you want government to do something instead of this bullshit of having these 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 people who have don't even know probably how their companies are running to those levels that this this parade and and bullshit show You want to do something, do something. Support the competition that you guys screwed up, not us, and and maybe put some more into actually us doing local farming like, local processing exactly all those things that actually change what like, we do yeah help us out yeah although i will take this on one more tangent before oh, okay. Why i not? did Why find not? what what has always ground my gears was the um i you know, i have a bit of a um I, I really like to monitor milk prices in Canada. <laughs> I find it very ironic and very crazy the the way milk is 
processed or produced, processed, oh, sold, right. quoted, all that sort of stuff. I, I, I think it's ridiculous. Um, but I did see that the dairy farmers of Canada actually said, let's hold our cows, not on our horses, but let's hold our cows here. We're not going to ask for a price increase because inflation has gotten too far out of hand and we've maybe gone back to that. Let's just take a price increase mentality too many times. So it is interesting to see that one group kind of saying, well, maybe we've gotten too far out over our skis here. And I think you and I have had conversations before. We've had conversations before around the fact that if you look at it on a per liter basis, if you take a two liter of milk uh, and a two liter of silk, the price gap is getting really close where, um, you know, the, the price per milliliter on a two liter, not on a four liter, but on a two liter is really, really narrow. It's getting, so are, it's getting to the, point are the right? farmers it's kind of putting themselves too far, yeah. uh, it's milk getting too expensive. And people say, well, I'm going to trade to plant-based because it's cheaper. You know, that's, that's well, a whole it's getting other to that point, buddy, or I'm going to do it this way. I've heard enough and maybe I'm buying into the media that I shouldn't be drinking as much milk. You know what? If I'm 449 or 499 on my independent for a two liter, which is legit. Mm -hmm. Well, if I, I might be 599, 699 on the milk alternative, but on sale, it's 499, 549. Well, shit, the Delta's. The Delta's gone or really not that big a deal. Maybe I will try an oat or an almond or a soy, you know, and they got their own implications for other environmental issues potentially, but right. I can actually do something different. So, to your so, point, so they, they put themselves in a spot where they've made themselves, they potentially have made their competitors stronger. My right. uh, my my grumpy take on that is we, we've been buying four liter 2% for a long, long, long time, right? Yeah. household household of five now we're four but if you factor in so i think that the milk guys have been skipflationing because the milk is not the same so i get to that third bag you know i'm in ontario so we use bags right so right. you know make fun of me at a different day but um i get to that third bag and the number of times we've had to throw out a bag because it's gone bad if I factor that in, if you're a milk guy and you're listening, this is a true bone. If I find you, I'm gonna I'm gonna be bitching about this. Is I probably throw out a half a bag every time. So now mm -hmm. I'm into cost range where I've I've just switched. I've gone right to oat milk. My wife is she hasn't made the switch yet, but she's starting to throw out more milk now. So she's gonna be there really shortly, right? As now, all mm -hmm. of a sudden, there is no cost difference because now I'm wasting it as well, right? So I know they've changed the milk. I know I know what they've changed, what's in it. They haven't said, but I know there's what something I can going see, on right? So there's something going on there, right? Like, yeah. yeah. And I ah. think if anything, like it, whether, you know, kind of going back full circle to, to skimflation or whatever, is that it's in the media. Consumers are noticing more because there's been there honestly have been too many brands that have gone a step too far and people's then notice, you know, brands have been reformulating products since the beginning of time. Right. It's like, yep. you know, yep. Kenny, we, we used to work for a yellow laundry detergent brand that would do that all the time, but I don't know who that is. Anyway. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's, it's something that, um, you know, now people are noticing it's in the media. So they feel, and then they have a voice because of social media, right? So they could, anybody can go on TikTok and blast brand X because it has less in it or is taste different or whatever. And then, um, you know, the, what I had said, you know, cause the, the, the media people were like, well, what can people do? And I said, well, honestly, I don't know if social media is the right answer, but I, I know calling the general inquiries line that you find on the back of packaging and saying, hey, this is change. I don't like it and complaining. Those actually land on the desk of brand managers and the brand managers, if they get enough of them are like, oh, maybe we went too far with this, right? And we have also seen, hey, we brought back the old formula. Like we've seen we a couple of those oh, uh, over the last little while, right? So the, the voice of, you know, letting brands know that, yeah, well, you know what? It did go too far. We noticed. We love this brand, but you're going to lose me as a customer. That's also another factor in that. Yeah, I think you're right. with the knobs of the, uh, right. the stereo, right? I think, like I said, like Hershey's the example for me right now with the peanut butter cups. I can tolerate the size down because I understand the game 
and I understand the cost implications. I get it, right? And I am one of those ones not willing to pay nine ninety nine price today for the equivalent that I in size that I had ten years ago. Mm-hmm. So I'm quite happy in the two ninety nine, three ninety nine. Let's say for the bag. What I don't like though is I know that has changed. It is less peanut buttery, less chocolatey, and more sugary. So now, and I know the game. I know cocoa's gone way up. I know peanut butter's gone up, and I know sugar hasn't gone up as much. Yeah. So now you're playing with me. Now you've now you fundamentally gave me in my head an inferior product. Now others may like it. They like the sweetness, and God bless you. But you're going to lose me as a customer. And I love that product. I've loved that product since I was a little kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, I think you got to be really cautious of brand. But I also think that the media in our country needs to do a better a better job of doing a little more investigation, asking some more questions, you know, and not just following the lead of government, which has really caused a lot of these problems. Yeah. Maybe not knowing they did, but ultimately, it, you know, the competition isn't something, again, that you and I did. They yeah, it's a cumulative effect of a bunch of decisions. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it just, it, and now the shit we're in is the shit we're in, right? But, yeah. And the three is love retail. We love this industry. So it's not like yeah. we're, you know, we're the ones, we're, 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 we're the ones fighting for this industry to thrive and survive. But Yeah, and the, the, you know, I, I wrote a whole article. The, the I think on that whole argument about, you know, sort of, um, you know, give, that, that retail is expensive and it's a low margin business. I wrote that article, I think for Western grocer or something. I was just like, come on guys. Like, yeah. you know, there, there's, uh, there's definitely voices. I think a lot of people are thinking it, but it's also on, on cool or on patriotic or on whatever loyal to, to say it. But, you know, I, I don't begrudge going to a Loblaws store. I know that they've, Mm -hmm. more or less prices as low as they possibly can because that's their whole price positioning here in the West is be the lowest price retailer. Uh, You know, I I don't, I I can't begrudge that, you know, and and I I don't want to set up a warehouse and have a fleet of trucks and stores and deal with unionized employees and blah, blah, blah. It's like, I don't want to do that. No. And I'm like, like, like you, I mean, listen, as much as I beat the shit out of them, I shop for stores. Yeah, me too. Right. Yeah. But I think it's legitimate that I kick the shit out of, you know why? Cause I'm a consumer, but I'm also an advocate for this industry. Yeah. And someone's got to sort of do it. I mean, that, that keeps people honest. We, we all three shop a lot of independent. I love mom and pops. I yeah. don't want, I don't want our fabric of our society falling apart because it literally comes down to five people. Right. Or five large corporations. Nobody wants that, but yeah. you know, anyway. How was that's that for good, that, That's a good inaugural. Uh, that was good for grumpy old men. This yeah. is this is our inaugural. What do we call this? The three grumpy men. Or or I'm okay with that. I just don't want or, to be single though. Or grumpy Kenny and see yeah, that's what I don't want. And you you're gonna go there. <laughs> you guys are just as grumpy. He was on yeah. to me right away. We should have like <laughs> two two grumps and a moderate. That's what we should call it. That I'm okay with because at least I got somebody with me because I always know I'm gonna be called the grump. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love I, it. I could be in the grump camp. That's for sure. Okay, I'm good. I got at least I got company. Yeah. Thanks for doing this. This is awesome. That was awesome. Yeah, it was fun. That, that is that is really awesome. Good stuff, yeah. guys. That was really fun.